Did you know that you can create any stock image you want with a simple process using Midjourney and Photoshop for marketing? We will also be using Topaz Gigapixel AI, but you don't need those pieces of software as you can use some free AI upscalers online instead of Topaz and Canva will remove white backgrounds. We will be using Midjourney version 5 for this as it creates very good stock images and seems to have been designed for this use case. It is easy to use and gives excellent results quickly. So let me show you how this is done. So the first thing we need to do is set ourselves up on Midjourney and you can learn on the free plan. Now I'm going to use a private server on Discord, which is how you access Midjourney. Now I also use the full professional plan because I don't want anyone else to use my images. This plan hides your images from other users on the Midjourney platform and you only get that at the highest tier level. The other two paid plans don't give you that same exclusivity and other people can then use those images that you've generated. I also want full copyright as I'm building a library of my own stock images for use in my marketing so I can quickly access images when I need them. So to give it a quick test, try the free plan. And I'd probably advise this if you're not sure before you commit to a subscription. Another option is just take the lower tier subscription for a month, have a play, and if you don't like it at the end of the month, just cancel. Please note this video is not sponsored. These recommendations are based on my own experience and workflow, and I've purchased and pay for all the software that I use. Now, I'm not going to show you the basic setup of Midjourney and Discord as there are plenty of good tutorials on YouTube already showing you how to do that. Just make sure you know how to invite the Midjourney bot to your private Discord server to get started if you're going to use one of the paid plans. So we're going to go onto Discord and then we're going to use Midjourney, which currently uses Discord as its interface. And we're going to create an image for a specific marketing project. So to make sure we're using Midjourney V5, we're gonna go forward slash settings, and we're gonna select V5 when that comes up. Now, the next step is to start building a simple prompt. So we're gonna take a simple prompt and we're gonna put that into Midjourney. We're going to break it down into a simple order so you can understand how to build a prompt for this use case. Now note in this example, I'm going to be generating a stock photo of a person, but you can use this for any object or subject and that's what makes it so powerful. So let's have a look at the prompt. The first part of the prompt will be the image we want and we need to create a picture in our mind, a concept in our mind, and then ask Midjourney to create that. So let's say I want to use this simple concept, joyful celebration, and I'm going to use that on a YouTube thumbnail for a video on that subject. The first thing I need to do is create an image of that in my own mind, and this helps us take the guesswork out of the image for the Midjourney AI. The more precise we can be in the image request, the quicker you will get the results you want from the AI. The more it has to guess, the longer it will take to get the image you want. And part of this process is to produce stock images quickly. When you're working on a project and you need multiple images, being precise will help you get there much quicker. Now, sometimes you might want to throw the concept straight at the AI to see if it can give you some ideas if you're stuck, but most of the time having a clear idea of the image you want is recommended. So let's have a look at the first part of our prompt where I have a specific image in my mind. Forward slash imagine a woman waving her hands in the air and wearing an orange top. Important note here, don't forget the comma. This helps the AI know this is a specific part of the command and we want to break the command up into sections so that the AI knows each text string relates to a different aspect of the image and that's what the commas help us to do. I have also specified an orange top so that the AI does not think that the white in the next part of the command is the clothing color as well, because when you specify a white background, the AI can take that as a color scheme for the elements in the picture. And that means that you will get a lot of images with people with white clothes. So we have to specify the color of the clothes to overcome that. So let's now have a look at the second part of our prompt. This is where we set the background of the image to white. So we're gonna type in on a white background comma. Don't forget the comma. Now this will set the background color to white most of the time. Now sometimes because you said orange top or orange clothes, the AI can get a little bit confused. Usually the commas should fix that, but you might have to play around with it a little bit if it starts to mix up those two commands. So let's have a look at the third part of our prompt. This is where we set the style. This is where we tell the AI what type of image we want. So we're going to type in photograph, photorealistic, 
stock photography. And again, we have to play with this if we don't get the results we want. Nine times out of 10, this works for me. So we're going to keep rolling the search. We're going to keep entering that phrase until we get some images we're happy with. And all we want to do is copy and paste the prompt. The remix or re-roll functions don't generate the best images. In my experience, I find the realism degrades each time you try and re-roll it or get it to do a variation. It thinks you're asking it to be more artistic or to give you a different style. And the quality definitely does degrade the more you do it. So here's some additional tips. If we don't get an image that's quite right, maybe the face isn't emphasized enough, just add some more detail to that element. Like you might say clear blue eyes and add that to the first part of the prompt and that will focus the AI on that element. Or say we want an upper body shot and it keeps giving us just a pure headshot. We can use the terms upper body shot or we can just tell it the subject is wearing a black belt. This forces it to include the belt and forces the upper body shot. For full length images where we want a full body image, typically when we're creating stock photography to illustrate action, we might have to put full body shot and we might mention something like blue shoes to get the AI to render the feet as well. By being very specific about the shoes and the eyes, we're telling the AI it has to include both of those elements and then that will force it into a full body shot. Now another tip, double check eyes and hands are rendered correctly as this is where the AI can sometimes get it wrong. And once we're happy with the images, we can then upscale them by using the upscale button. We should now have an image we can use as a stock image. There are a couple more things we need to do. We need to make that image larger. Now I use Gigapixel because it's probably the best AI enlarging tool out there. It's fast, but it is expensive. So I only recommend this for people with a good solid marketing budget who use a lot of images. If not, like I said before, look for free online AI upscalers. Now it's very simple to use. I use the HQ settings behind quality and 2x them sometimes i'll 4x them if i want them bigger and that's what i use for most of my stock photography style images once we've rented them out and we've chosen a place to save them we can now drop them into photoshop first thing we need to do is we want to open up that document in photoshop and then we're going to copy the layer we want to hide the underlying layer the original layer so we're going to switch that one off by using the eye tool and then we're going to have an option appear which says remove background so we're going to select that and it usually does a relatively good job. If it doesn't, try the other option where you select the subject. Now there's lots of other selection tools that go beyond the scope of this tutorial. One of my favorites is the color selection tool, but look for some tutorials on how to select your subject if you're finding the results are not quite there. All I'm showing you here is one of the most basic, quickest methods. Now what we want to do is double click on the mask to make some adjustments. Now important, we want to tick remember settings because whatever we get right here is pretty much going to be saved for all future images. We want to set the refine mode to object aware, edge detection to one pixel, and you can play with these settings. I'm just giving you a starting place. We want to tick smart radius and that helps it figure out edges better. Then I like to just smooth it out a little bit in global refinements by using smooth six over one pixel and shift edge to minus 2% to bring the edge in to make sure none of the white edge is still showing. Now it can leave a little bit of softness to that edge, so play with it. If you go up to plus seven, plus eight, you'll start to see the edge fades. Now sometimes that can work for your stock image and that will make sure that the white is fully removed from the edge of the image, but you have to check the transparency isn't too strong on the edges. Then I'll just use the plus and minus tool and the paintbrush to add the object back in where it's got it wrong or remove background that has been missed. Once we've finished our adjustments, we want to make sure we output it to new layer with layer mask and hit OK. You should now have a refined mask. Just double check you have everything. And if it misses anything, you can select those areas and just paint them in on the mask with a paintbrush. One of the things I will often do is use the quick select tool to select any areas of white that are inside the subject. And then I will paint over those with the brush to ensure I've got the mask that I want. Now what we should have now is an image on a transparent background and now we just need to go to file export quick export as png select our folder and we should have a ready-made stock image once you've done a few of these you'll soon get into the flow of it and you'll be able to generate images in just a few minutes now this is a game changer for marketing content of all types I've been doing online marketing for over 20 years in all of my businesses and finding good images is never that easy. So this tool revolutionizes that whole process. 
Now, I hope you've enjoyed this quick tutorial. So like and subscribe and drop a comment if you want more content like this on marketing and entrepreneurship and using AI in your marketing and business productivity. If you are looking to start your own business, we have a free marketing training course that has 40,000 plus students already enrolled. It has a four and a half star rating and it's designed for complete beginners. That's on our website. That also comes with an exam and certification, and I'll put a link to that in the description below. We also have the Business Buddies training community, where I work with budding entrepreneurs to help them get their businesses off the ground. That includes 58 hours of advanced premium training, and that can also be found on the website. Hope you enjoyed the video. I'll catch up with you in the next one.